Johnny Q here again, and this morning I am in Weston Lakes, the beautiful, gated golf course community of Weston Lakes, but more specifically, I'm at 3922 Weston Drive, and I'm about to segue into a video tour of the home, but before I do, I've got a special guest this morning. I brought with me Gerald Rue, who is the owner of Monogram Homes, who built this fantastic home. Jerry? Hey, Jenny. How are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm ready. I brought Jerry with me today because I would love for Jerry to talk about some of the things that he's done to this, his philosophy of building more than anything else, and why this home and all of his homes that I've ever seen, and I've known Jerry for about five or six years, um, every home I've ever seen him build has been phenomenal, but beneath the skin too. It's not just the things that the buyer can see or the homeowner can see, it's the things that, are, that, that we don't see like drywall, paint, things like that. So tell me, I'll, I'll let you speak now, <laughs> I'm hogging this conversation. That's tell right. me what's your philosophy for building a home? I was born in the business. Uh, my dad, my grandfather came to the country in 1929 and started off as a cabinet maker, trim carpenter by trade. Yeah. Uh, in 1962, my dad, after framing houses for about 20 years, decided to open up his own construction company, building homes. And as an eight year old, I used to go to work with him on the weekends. Uh, started pushing a broom when I was about nine or ten. Yeah. I did trim carpentry work at 14, framing at 16. Actually broke my back falling off of a roof when I was 25. Oh, did you? So that whole time I was working with my dad, his philosophy was always build the house properly the first time. Even the things you don't see, which is behind the drywall, are important. And if you do your job properly, the end product that you provide to the customer is, has less flaws in it, less customer complaints, and overall is a better product. And that's just the philosophy I build with. You can always put a nice coat of paint on the drywall and make the house look great. Exactly. But if it's not built properly behind the drywall, you have problems that you can never fix. For example, I use 5 8 drywall on all my ceilings. The code standard is a half inch drywall. And I've noticed that before, I've been in a lot of your homes while they were under construction, it, and I'm familiar with a lot of builders, and I've always noticed things like that about your homes, and it started with that drywall. I always thought, your drywall is thicker than, any, any, than anyone else that I've seen. What does that do for the buyer? Well, the 5 8 drywall on the ceiling does two things. One, it provides a flatter surface, a, a, a surface where you have less shadowing or less dips and bumps in the drywall which provides a, a cleaner looking surface. The second thing that it does is sound deadening. 5 8 drywall is a fire rated board, so it's a denser material than a half inch drywall. Okay. And so if somebody's walking around upstairs, you're less likely to hear the noises that are coming from the upstairs through the 5 8 drywall. Uh, and it just provides a better overall product to the customer in the very end. It, Speaking of sound, I'm going to jump in a little bit into insulation too. I don't know. I don't want to cut you off, if, but your insulation looks to be different than just about anybody I've seen building a home. In this particular house, we used a foam insulation as yeah. opposed to a fiberglass insulation, and it does really a couple of things. First, it seals the house up very tight, mm -hmm. um, and it allows for less transfer of air, cool air from the inside to the exterior. Uh, the second thing that the foam insulation does is you don't insulate actually the ceiling of the house, mm -hmm. you insulate underneath the plywood on the roof. Right. And in doing so, you create a conditioned space in the attic where the air conditioning and the heating equipment is in a conditioned area. Mm -hmm. So most homes, the way that they're insulated, the air conditioners and the heating units are put up in the attic. When the air conditioner turns on, that ductwork is 150 degrees blowing hot air into the house. Right. This way, my attic stays probably 80, 85 degrees really? in the heat of the summer. Therefore, the air conditioner has to work less hard to cool the home, and it provides a greater, a lower energy bills in the house. For example, in this house, my energy bills this summer have been about $160, $170. For this, whole, this, this is over 5,000 square foot. Correct. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. It, Absolutely amazing. It costs a little more to install it that way, mm -hmm. and that's why my homes are a little more expensive, but you gain that value in the long term. If mm -hmm. I can save $150, $200 every month on my heating and cooling cost, it doesn't take very long to pay off that type of an insulation package. 
And you've got two by six construction everywhere around here, just about all the exterior walls this, anyway. And this particular house is all two by six construction on the first floor, two by four on the second floor. Um, and the two by six construction is anything over 10 feet. I feel you need to use a two by six wall. Uh, it gives you a stronger exterior shell. Uh, when you get into a 10 foot or less wall, you can use a two by four uh, because the structurally it'll, it's sound enough to carry the loads. And you've got foam in these, on the exterior walls too, correct? All the exterior walls are foam, yes. Um, one other thing that I notice a lot when we're talking about heating, air conditioning, stuff like that, is I've never seen homes with so many return air ducts. There, if you start looking for them anyway, and it seems like they're almost in every room just about. So imagine a bedroom when the door is closed, it's kind of like a balloon. You, right. you try to blow that balloon up and eventually you get to a point where you can no longer blow the balloon up. Okay. The walls, the ceilings, and the floor of the bedroom are the, the size of that balloon. Mm -hmm. As you try to force air into that room, it has to be able to allow some air to escape in the bedrooms. Most bedrooms don't have a return air in them, so they don't cool correctly. And most houses you go into, the bedrooms, if the doors are shut, are always warmer than the rest of the house. By providing that return air in the bedroom, it allows you to blow air in because it's actually sucking air out at the same time. Right. So therefore you can keep cool air moving through the room to keep the room conditioned to the same, the same as the rest of the house. That's awesome. Now in this home that I've noticed, I noticed you've got three big AC units outside. What's, uh, I'm sure they are. Everything else that you seem to do, are, are they 14 sear? 16, they're, 16 they're a 16 sear, sear unit, yeah. And we use, in, the, in this house we use 90 plus furnaces with two ERVs, which are energy recovery ventilation units. Now I've heard that mentioned to you, you, I think you've mentioned that to me before. I wasn't familiar with that term. What does that do exactly? So because this house is built so tight, you have to actually bring outside air into the house mechanically. Oh really? So these energy recovery units, basically what they do is they, when the furnace turns on, they draw air into the house from the exterior and they push stale indoor air out of the house. In doing so, they pass through a system where it allows that warm indoor air coming in mm -hmm. to be cooled by the cool air you're pushing out of the house. Okay. So it, it exchanges the heat and the cool at the same time, making that air that you're bringing in cooler, help the air conditioner work less hard. But more importantly, it allows the house to have an air exchange, which is necessary in the house. Otherwise, you have a sick house. Hmm. And, and so this is the only way because of the, the foam insulation that we use to allow that exchange to occur. Cool, cool. That's, all these things that you're talking, now these are all well and above building code, which is what it seems to me most builders sort of stick to. And that, it's what I've always found impressive about your homes. The code minimum is just that, it's a minimum. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that the minimum standards are acceptable, especially for, for higher end buyers. Mm -hmm. I think that when we build a house today, there are products available to us that provide a better environment within the home that we should be using. And I think that my standards far exceed the code minimum. Hot water heaters. You don't put normal hot water heaters in here either, do you? No, I'm of, I'm of the belief that energy is, uh, having an energy efficient house is important. The standard hot water tank is a tanked hot water tank, one or two fifty gallons, whatever the house requires. And that's what most builders install in the houses. I'm of the belief that you put in a Renai or a tankless water heater that allows you when you turn the water on, the water becomes heated at that point. So instead of storing a hundred gallons of hot water and always trying to keep that water warm, only when you turn on the faucet does the water become hot with the tankless hot water heater. The beauty to that is, is if you have a 100 gallon bathtub in the master bath, mm -hmm. if I have 100 gallons of hot water upstairs in the attic, I'm only going to get about 40 gallons of hot water out of it when it's mm -hmm. also in there. Because as it's, it's, water's it's drawing in, out, it's putting it's cold, with water cold water in, of course, yeah. With a tankless system, I can run that hot water continuously for as long as that valve is open and it will keep putting out water at 100 degrees. Yeah, yeah because I've been up in the attic and I've seen you've got two different units up there, right? And I've heard you say that they're run in series and I'm not positive so, what that means. So in this house, because of the number of bathrooms that we have mm -hmm. and the number of sinks and, and whatnot, 
in order to engineer your system correctly, we've run two hot water tanks. They're run in series. So basically the water goes into the first unit where it's heated, preheated, so to mm -hmm. speak, and then into the second unit where it's heated even more. It comes out of the second unit at 100 degrees, but if I turn on six showers in this house mm -hmm. or, or run the dishwasher or the, uh, the washing machine, I'm drawing more water than that unit, one unit is capable of producing. So by putting two units in series, I'm able to provide as much hot water as this house will ever use. We could turn every faucet on, every bathtub on, every shower, and we still won't run out of hot water. That's awesome. That's, personally, I know that's an awesome thing. <laughs> Walking around this house and clients and buyers can see some of the, the extras you've done to it. The, uh, very nice granite. It looks like custom cabinetry everywhere in the soft closed doors, the huge refrigerator, the built-in refrigerator, um, the Thermidor, and I'm covering all this in the virtual tour, so I don't want to take up a lot of your time. I know a lot of you want to see the home. One other thing I wanted to ask you about, because I didn't really notice this, and you had mentioned it to me under construction, and that's when you started talking about the differences in paint. To me, it's just the color. I walk in and I see the color, but you said there was so much more involved in paint than what I was seeing. The typical builder today will go into a house and they will spray the entire house. So they use mm -hmm. a spray gun and spray the walls, ceilings, I've seen them and everything. Mm -hmm. The way I look at a paint job is if I do it correctly, it will last for 10 or 15 years without having to be repainted for the homeowner. So on our walls specifically, we put two coats of primer and two coats of finish paint. Yeah. But we roll the paint with a roller by hand as really? opposed to using a spray gun. On the trim work, and this is really important, when we, tri when we paint the trim in a house, we start off first by priming it, mm -hmm. filling all the holes, and sanding it. Then we reprime it, re sand it, really? and then put two coats of paint on top of that. And it gives you a furniture finish quality to the paint job. So when you run your hands over the trim work in my houses, you're not going to feel the grain of the wood or roughness really? in the wood. It's yeah. going to be smooth like a baby's bottom. In the end, that is a value that customers don't see just by looking at it. They actually have to touch it to feel it. But it'll, it'll last a lot longer that way, won't it? I think my paint jobs will last on the walls 15 years without having to be repainted, without fainting. And on the trim, you can get a lifetime out of the paint. Awesome. It's awesome. We're about to segue into the virtual tour. Is there anything that you want to let anybody else know before we let them see the home? This I wish you would have told me. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, I'm a, I'm a small builder. I don't uh -huh. build a lot of projects every year. Yeah. Um, and I like it that way. It yeah. allows me to be hands on. I'm on the job every single day. Right. I'm not, I don't have superintendents working for me and people like that. You contact me directly, I give you my cell phone number. That's right. Uh, I don't have a big office staff. It's me and one other person that's helping me. So it's a very hands-on personal experience when you build a house with me. Unlike some of the yeah. larger builders, you don't know who you're dealing with no. and it can change you're, from day to day. You're exactly right. I know that first-hand experience. Jerry, thank you Thanks, very Jenny. much. I've been wanting to get you in here for a while to do this. And I think your buyers would love to see this. And thank you, thank you again. I appreciate your time, thank you. Stand back, watch this virtual tour, video tour we did. We'll have some aerial drones and the whole bit, and we're gonna go through some of the features of the home by video. If you have any questions, call your realtor, have them call me. And if you wanna see the home, call your realtor. Thanks.